The Toy Story films are some of Pixar's best. Wouldn't you agree? Have you ever scratched your head while watching Toy Story because some things just don't make sense? Well, today we're going to show you a video about Toy Story theories you may haven't thought of before. Let's get the show on the road. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You'll join our notification squad and be updated with all of our new content. Before we get started, can you guess which movie these emojis are hinting at? Stay tuned to find out after the video. You gotta date with justice, one-eyed Bart. Andy's toys are immortal. Do you ever question how the writers can make Toy Story movies? Have you ever considered Andy's toys dying? It's probably not the first thing that comes to mind. One theory surrounding the film is that the toys are immortal, and the only way they can die is if they're crushed or burned. Well, they almost were the latter in Toy Story 3. The toys would also continue to forget their previous owners and live the same cycle forever. Crazy. Well, it is kind of a good thing that they're immortal, because losing some of our favorite Pixar characters would be tragic. It's pretty crazy that the original movie is over 20 years old now. We are going to see some, if not all, of the toys back again in 2019 for Toy Story 4, if everything goes smoothly. Supposedly, this story is going to be more of a love story between Woody and Bo Peep. We've caught glimpses of their relationship before in the other movies, and it's speculated it will showcase that in the new film. Do you like that they're creating another Toy Story, or do you think it's time to put the franchise to bed and go back to creating different films? Yeah! Illuminati, Toy Story 3. Have you heard that Toy Story 3 may be referencing the Illuminati? Lotso Bear would represent the Illuminati power when he brainwashed Buzz and wields him as his spy. The evidence to support this claim comes from one line from the movie. It's Lotso! He's made us into a pyramid, and he put himself on top! The pyramid with an eye on top is the symbol that has become associated with the Illuminati. It's the same symbol you can see in the back of the $1 bill in the United States. The Illuminati usually focus their power to influence the United States. Lotso represents their manipulation to establish his own power as he lords over all of the toys of Sunnyside Daycare. It's no surprise that Lotso also felt very threatened by all of the new toys to arrive at Sunnyside. You've got a space ranger and a cowboy, along with friends that could overthrow his whole rule. Fortunately, Andy's toys are smart and dedicated to doing whatever it takes to return to their owner. Internet conspiracies and the Illuminati go together like Woody and Buzz. Have you ever thought of the secret society being referenced in Toy Story 3? Okay, everybody, coast is clear. The Walking Dead is based on Toy Story films. This could be a little far-fetched, and you may be thinking, how could an animated movie meant for children be related to The Walking Dead? Let us explain. The Walking Dead, based on comic books of the same name, is now an extremely popular TV show. If you think about it, both heroes are sheriffs. You have Woody and Rick Grimes. Woody and Rick can both be downers. Rick is trying to keep his group safe, which is pretty stressful given their circumstances. Woody has to deal with Buzz Lightyear, the new toy in town, and other dilemmas throughout the trilogy. Take Sid, for example. He attached a rocket to Buzz and may have burned Woody. They have their own survival scenarios to deal with, much like The Walking Dead. The two characters also lead a group of people, or toys, they care about, who are bound together by fate. Both groups are also extremely loyal to one another, and they try and make sure nothing bad happens to each other. If the theory is correct, then The Walking Dead owes a lot of credit for its popularity to Toy Story for inspiration. Although it may not be true, it is an interesting theory to ponder. How do you feel about this one? Gotcha. Sid becomes a garbage man to save toys. It's hard to forget Sid Phillips, the evil boy next door in Toy Story. A kid that tortured and experimented on toys like a sociopath, or just an adolescent boy depending on how you look at it. He would blow up toys like Combat Carls, set them on fire, take them apart, and put their parts on other toys, which were definitely freaky, by the way. Luckily, Sid learned his lesson in the end after Woody has a heart-to-heart -heart with him and all of his beloved toys come after him. It's never been officially confirmed, but do you remember the garbage man that's shown in Toy Story 3? Did you ever notice that his shirt remarkably resembles Sid's? The theory proposes that Sid became a garbage man and tries to save toys that have been thrown out after having a revelation of toys being alive. It could be his own way of righting his wrongs. We are to believe that Sid being a garbage man is the punishment he deserved. After all, the position isn't one that is highly sought after. However, it doesn't seem like Sid is upset about his profession and actually seems like he enjoys himself. What do you think of this theory? Andy's dad is dead. 
Probably the biggest question surrounding the Toy Story franchise is what happened to Andy's dad, right? We never hear about him, and we're left to try and put the puzzle pieces together ourselves. As Woody is sliding down the banister in the beginning scene of Toy Story, we can see photographs hung on the wall in the background. You're left to think they are Andy, but they're actually pictures of his dad as a kid. Supposedly, the house that Andy and his mom are living in belonged to Andy's grandparents. Andy's father, whose name is also Andy, may have had polio as a child, recovered, met Andy's mom, and had kids, but then fell ill and they moved in with his parents. Andy Sr. was a huge fan of Woody's Roundup as a child, and being from a poor family, he didn't have enough Cowboy Crunchy cereal box tops to qualify for a Woody doll. The company eventually abandoned the contest because children were becoming more interested in space and astronauts. A secretary at the company felt like Andy should win the prototype Woody doll and sent it to him. In Toy Story 2, when Al is poking around the yard sale, Andy's mom tells him Woody isn't for sale because he's an old family toy. Here's where you folks will be staying. The Caterpillar Room. Marxist Undertones, Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 seems to have the most theories surrounding it. Maybe it was because it felt so much darker than the other two movies, and does have some possible dark undertones. Yet another theory surrounding Toy Story 3 is the possibility of having Marxist undertones. Andy comes from a wealthier family, and is moving on to college to further his education, and he cares deeply enough for his belongings that he feels the need to label them. This is exploitation. Something else we see is that Lotso and his crew have the luxury of the butterfly room, while our heroes get sent to the caterpillar room with all of the toddlers. In this case, we see an example of Marx's staples of capitalism, a ruling class and a working class. Lotso says that for the good of the community, we ask the newer toys, the stronger ones, to take on the hardships the rest of them can't bear anymore. Like in a capitalist society, the ruling class sees the poor conditions of the workers being necessary. Lotso continues to preach that Sunnyside is a good place for them, even after he puts the toys in a makeshift jail cell. You are a toy! Allegory for John Lasseter's experience with Disney. If you didn't know, before he created Toy Story, director John Lasseter was once fired from Disney. Lasseter was trying to be innovative and push towards computer animation when the company wanted to stick to making films using hand drawings. Lasseter got to work on creating a computer animated version of The Brave Little Toaster with a few colleagues, and that's when he lost his job. According to this theory, Toy Story is Lasseter's way of putting aside differences and beliefs and creating something spectacular. Woody represents the old school way of traditional animation. Buzz Lightyear is the hip, innovative, and more technologically advanced method. Just like in the film where Woody and Buzz put aside their differences, Disney and Pixar did the same to make their audiences happy. We're glad they did, because they created films that will be remembered for generations to come. Toy Story has now been out more than 20 years, and nobody could have predicted how successful the film would become. It was the first ever computer animated feature film that spawned a franchise. It's hard to picture Pixar without Toy Story. After all, it was the first time that we saw The Bouncing Lamp, Pixar's infamous production logo sequence. Emily or Andy? Andy's mom owned Jesse. You may have heard or seen some clues that all of the Pixar movies are set in the same universe. Well, here's another example, and a theory that Andy's mom is Emily who owned the Jesse doll. First, look at the hat that Andy wears in the films. It doesn't look like Woody's, but better resembles Jesse's since it's red and has white stitching. It's also very similar to the hat that can be seen placed on Emily's bed in a flashback. It is plausible that it was passed down to Andy, just like his Woody doll. Andy's mom is also not given a name, so she could easily be Emily. Emily's face isn't shown in the film, but she has hair that is a similar length and color to Andy's mom. If this theory is true, it could be one reason why Andy's dad and mom got together, because they both shared an interest in Woody's Roundup. It is very sweet that they presumably passed down their favorite childhood belongings to their son. It's unlikely that we'll ever learn the truth of these theories, but it is still fun to think about. Do you think Andy's mom is Emily? But how'd you escape? Well, <laughs> it wasn't easy. I... What do you mean, escape? Holocaust Analogy, Toy Story 3 There are theories out there that are darker than others. The toys themselves in Toy Story 3 have been theorized to be like the victims of the Holocaust. For starters, Buzz Lightyear suggests they hide in the attic, similar to what Anne Frank and her family did. Sunnyside Daycare, which the evil Lotso runs, could be considered a work camp. The toys are all afraid of being thrown away at any given time, or burned, like the climax of the film where Andy's toys are almost incinerated. Don't forget about The Box, where the bad toys who step out of line go. 
it would be frightening to live under Lotso's regime at Sunnyside. Leon Critch stated that the Holocaust was never anything that was discussed in the making of Toy Story 3. It is good that the Holocaust was never discussed in the making of the film, but it is still an interesting theory to think about. Lotso was a creepy bear, you have to admit. An evil dictator who decided which toy was a keeper and which ones to be discarded only to become toddler fodder. No toy wants to be sucked on and destroyed. Do you think this theory is too far out there? He's not here, Mom. Woody's gone. Andy's parents are going through a divorce. Another possible theory surrounding the mystery of Andy's dad is that he and Andy's mom are getting a divorce. Since his dad isn't mentioned, we have to try and think of every scenario, right? After all, not only is he not around, it seems like he disappeared out of thin air. The photographs we saw before actually could have been a young Andy Jr., and the only other pictures in the house are of Molly and Andy's mom. Plus, Andy's mom isn't wearing a wedding ring in Toy Story. Another interesting fact is that Molly is only one, so whatever happened between Andy's mom and her husband occurred shortly before the film takes place. Part of the premise of Toy Story is that Andy and his mom are moving, and all the toys are freaking out. We all remember the huge staff meeting, and that the toys all have moving buddies because no toy gets left behind. It's obvious that Andy's family is moving into a smaller house, which often happens after a divorce. Have you thought of this scenario as a possibility, since Andy's dad isn't in the picture? Do you have any other explanations? Let us know! Well, that's all we have for you today. Were you shocked by any of these theories? Have you come up with some of your own? Have you heard of any of these before? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to like the video and check out our playlist. And the answer to the movie emoji is... From all of us at Screen Rant, thank you for watching.